night. Here is Coach Mike D'Antoni. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Nice Welcome to meet you. you. Nice uh, to meet you. Some thoughts about James' play in the second half. Another another day for James. I mean, he's he's done it all year, and uh, and he really stepped up. We were struggling, uh, big shots, uh, struggling really to have any kind of rhythm or play, and James just put it, put us on his back, and he's been doing it for a while now. As good as Clint was in in the in the first half, you've talked so much about how he needs to be able to stay at that level. Do you feel like he got a little tired in the second half? Uh, you know, I don't think so. I think that. Um, uh, he was pretty much, I mean, you can't just stay at the level he was the first half because that's, then we wouldn't be thinking, talking about James Harden, we'd be talking about Clint all the time. I mean, he played really, really well. And I thought he had a good second half. He wasn't, uh, didn't have the same opportunities in the first half. But, you know, you know, he, he, he defended well. He played well. I thought he was good the whole game. He was just exceptional in the first half. Mike, Kim Davis, Chalk Talk. Can you just talk about um, offensively, were they doing anything on Defensively, we putting some hex not... on us or something. I don't know. Giving us the, the stink uh, or something. I don't know. We just couldn't make a shot. I thought we were good shots. And, uh, you know, when uh, we had four or five guys, just couldn't make a shot. It's just the way it is sometimes. <coughs> Which is encouraging because we don't want to rely on just making shots. I think last year we did that and, and the previous teams. But we can win not making shots. And that's what's important. I thought our defense was pretty good the whole game. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Coach uh, Andrew Chang, Southern Daily News. You guys clinched, uh, you know, the first seed a long time ago and had a lot of games where, you know, it wasn't just meaningless, but it was more so not something where y'all really had to play too hard. Do you think that had an effect on kind of them coming out and being sluggish? I think a little bit. I think just the uh, build up to uh, this game without having been distracted. I mean, we've probably been thinking about this for about like a month because we already quit thinking about the league because we already wrapped up first. And in and guys out, you know, we're trying to rest guys and not, and that's why I cautioned before. I mean, I understand it's in vogue to rest everybody, but, you know, you've got to get back in rhythm now. And, and But like I said, I, I'm just glad we got it out, and, and now we can start playing some basketball. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Mike, what do you think were the key factors in keeping Towns from really getting involved offensively? Uh, you know, it, it happens, first of all, and uh, uh, – I thought Clint did a great job, but you know, guys like Towns, we were doubling and trying to throw different things at him, and uh, uh, he never got his rhythm. Uh, you know, we kind of forget, like we're you know we're playing the eighth eighth place team, right, or the eighth seed. Well, when they had uh, Butler and he was healthy, they were the third seed. So it's not like you know they're back to the third seed kind of kind of strength. They're a good team, and it's going to you know it's going to be we're going to have to play. We're going to have to. Uh, play better, obviously, but uh, really happy with the way it went, and uh, uh, we'll see what we can do Wednesday. Mike, what happened on that free throw where the play sort of stopped? Right? Well, yeah, because, you know, the referee said one. Uh, everybody forgot it. We forgot, they forgot, and the referees forgot. That was one. Now, I don't know if they got walked when he got it or not. I'm, I'm yelling he walked. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just yelling. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I was wondering what was happening, and they just took off. And it was one of those things we weren't. We should have been aware of it a little bit more, or they just gave us the rope of dope and they took off. I don't know, but whatever happened, it wasn't good, was it? Jonathan Fagan, Houston Chronicle. In games like this, where you are getting your usual shots, but they're just not going, James normally just keeps feeding them. Was there anything that led you to see that he was going to just try and score and take over, or anything said that he was going to just look for his own shot rather than keep? sort of going to those same threes? Well, I, I think, to be honest with you, I think he would have gone there if they were open uh, because they, they did a lot of staying at home and they gave us a lot of, you know, James two-on-one at the rim, and I think he recognized that and, and took advantage of it. Um, I don't think it was a conscious, oh, they're not hitting. I think he has complete faith in them. I just tell him, and we take him, we lose that way, so be it. Uh, but he's just making the right play every time. A little bit is dictated by their defense. And a little bit uh, that he was just filling his oats and he was going after it. Mike Bryant, Smith Houston Chronicle. You've been with Clint for two years now. How much has his game evolved, especially when it comes to his confidence and being able to, to feed him early and, and really get you guys going in a game like that? A lot, first of all. And, you know, I, I'm, I told him, I don't know if I told him, Mike told you guys, but uh, he was sitting at the kids' table at the wedding for a long time. And now he's up to the, he's, he's given like 
toast and stuff like that. He's up with the guys, and they're having confidence in him. So he's he's matured a lot, um, and especially in the eyes of the other players, just the confidence they have in him. I mean, he, he's terrific, and he's he's really good. I think he's probably unevaluated. Uh, probably won't be this summer when he gets paid, but you know, right now he is. Uh, and people kind of sleep on him a little bit, but he's one of the better centers in the league. All right, all right, guys. Good. Somebody get Mike D'Antoni a cough drop, please. All right, highlights of game one, how the Rockets beat Jimmy Butler and the Timberwolves. Wolves in the playoffs for the first time since 2004. That was the year Kevin Garnett won MVP. Clint Capella was a rock star in the first half. He had 20 points. He had, he had 20 points, and as, as you know, Coach said, they were basically taking away their three-point shot, and they were playing two-man game in the middle, and it was Harden and Capella who combined for a total of 68 points together. You know, so those two definitely, you know, read the defense well, as Rose just did here also. I heard a tweet, D. Rose to the line, he had 16. Jimmy Butler had only 13. Yeah, Jimmy Butler didn't have his best stuff tonight, but nice jab step three going right there. Minnesota takes the lead, 36-34. Back comes Clint Capella, one of three rejections in the game. He had 24 and 12. Yeah, 24 and 12, and those three rejections came up big. And again, you see he and Harden playing a two-man game in the middle of the floor. Look at James Harden. Oof. Dance on him. Uh oh. Is that is that a walk out there? Nah, that was just sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, we're gonna see close in between, between, legs, between cross, step, step back. back. That's two steps, right? A lot of people are complaining, calling a walk. It's the, this. It's Harden's new version of the step back. It's, it's the Euro on the jump shot. Okay. Nice. nice. <laughs> Houston led by seven at halftime. Andrew Wiggins for three. And Minnesota takes a two-point lead. Wiggins had 18 in the game. But the MVP, MVP favorite went into takeover mode. Here, plus the foul on Derrick Rose. Listen, Harden, when it was time to shine bright, he shined brighter than anybody else. And there he is with the thunderous jam. And it doesn't matter. Derrick Rose had no answers for Harden. Incredible handles, layups, and one hard likes it. You see him flexing. 44 points. Fifth 40-plus point playoff game of his career. We go to the fourth. Jamal Crawford, 4-3. Big three, big time shot maker. And, you know, Minnesota kept close. They kept doing the right thing. But Harden was just a little bit too much for them. And they needed every single point that Harden gave them tonight. Big strip there. And, again, Harden slows down, studies the defense. Comsley drops the three. Timeout, Minnesota. And James Harden says, this is my house, and I'm the MVP. He was 7 of 12 from deep. 20 seconds left. Wolves down five. Jimmy Butler's going to drive. Great defense by P.J. Tucker. Carl Anthony Towns is there. He had 12 boards. Makes it a three-point game. Now, Paul thinks they're going to give the foul, but they don't. Uh-oh. And he throws it away. Yeah, he got trapped in the backcourt. And, and and most most NBA teams aren't used to seeing traps in the backcourt. And therefore, he threw it away. Butler coming down here. Dan Tony wanted a foul before he got the three off. But Butler got the three off and still missed it. Now, his right foot was inside the line. So they needed three. If that had gone in, it would have been a two-point shot. Just a matter of, you know, not understanding your foot spacing at that time. And at those point in times in the game, you have to be so conscious of shot space, foot space, and time on the clock. I still feel it shouldn't even have got down to that point right there. Uh, Houston had to understand that, hey, you can't mess up that defensive possession. You have to get the call in from Dan Tony, who obviously called for the foul. You got a foul. I don't think I think we should even be talking about foot space. And Jim, mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler should have been fouled before that because when you put it down to a heave like that, anything can happen. So we have heard from Mike Dan Tony. We've heard from you, great gentlemen. Now we hear from Minnesota Timberwolves head coach Tom Thibodeau. Questions. Hey, Coach. Uh, Glenn Hill with the Houston Chronicle. Um, can you talk about Jimmy and Derek's individual defense on James Harden in the second half? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were several plays in which, you know, I thought we defended well, and he made, you know, uh, and James is that type of player. I mean, we've seen it all year. Um, very difficult to guard. Uh, basically, you have to guard him with your whole team. And uh, it's not just his scoring, but the, his playmaking, all the things that he does. Tom, what did they do to, to really limit uh, Carl and, and what he could do on the offensive end? 
Well, uh, the switching and the double team, you know, so um, that's, and he's got to be more active. Hey, Coach, Kim Davis, Chalk Talk. Before the game, you talked about the Rockets' defense. Um, was it what you expected? Did they do anything more, or is this just Yeah, no, they're good. Like? They're very good, and uh, they're tied together. You know, they, they do a lot of switching. And after the switch, they read the ball extremely well. They react, uh, they swarm, and so you got to make good decisions. You got to make good plays. Uh, you have to have the ability to read and react. What did you uh, see in this performance tonight that gives you confidence moving forward in the series? Well, I thought we did a lot of things well. We didn't finish uh, quarters the way we would have liked. Uh, you know, they're a great team. We can't have lulls. And, uh, you know, I thought we were in position at the end to have an opportunity to win the game. So we want to take a look at the film, uh, see where we can improve. And, uh, you know, we know how they're a great team. So we got to play for 48 minutes. Can't have those lulls that we had. When you say Carl has to be more active, you know, clearly he's the focal point of their, of their game plan. How does he do that? What, you know? Well, they, you run the floor and kick the ball out, repost. Keep moving around, search it out, uh, get to the offensive board. Uh, you got to sprint around. You know, like that's you know, you know that's what. And you learn you you know when teams are double teaming you, that's what you have to do. You have to make the right play, and so you have to also go get to positions in which where it's difficult for them to double team. And so, transition's a big part of that. But you got to run the floor. Phipps, can you build upon a performance like tonight where you had multiple guys contributing offensively in light of Cat not giving what you guys needed offensively? Yeah, well, the, the, the important thing, it's not, it's not a one-on-one -on -one game, and so everyone has to understand that. So if they're going to double team, that means it's going to be easy for other people. And if they're going to switch, we have to make the right reads. And so the, if we're making the right plays, the game it will tell you who's going to get the shots. And as long as we take good shots, then I think we're going to score. You know, we're usually a pretty, you know, we got to the line 28 times. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, and, uh, you know, so I thought Wig got going and got hurt with foul trouble. I want to take a look at how the game was called because I thought, you know, Teague was in foul trouble also. And that, and that hurt us. I thought Derek gave us a good lift off the bench. I thought Jamal gave us a good lift. I thought uh, Jeff in the second half got aggressive. You know, and we need that. We need him to attack. Um, so the rebounding, I thought, was strong. Anyone else? Thanks, Coach. Thank yeah. you. All right, so Tom Thibodeau with his comments. So we now welcome in Joe Borgia, NBA Senior Vice President of Replay and Referee Operations. And, Joe, let's start in Cleveland with an illegal screen call on Larry Nance Jr. Can, a, can you walk us through what the officials uh, we're looking for in this particular instance. Sure, Rick. First of all, that's the most common play in the NBA. We have over 200 screens a game. So what the officials are looking for, first they're looking, does Nance get directly in Oladipo's path and give him an opportunity to avoid contact? And then, which he, he actually does that. The problem is, is if you look at his stance, look how far his legs are apart. That's not a normal basketball stance. And the problem is, is Oladipo doesn't hit Nance in the chest if he did it be a legal screen. As Oladipo tries to go around the screen, he now trips over Nance's leg, which is extended way outside his shoulder. Therefore, it becomes an illegal screen at that point. And a great explanation about how, how far his legs were. You just rarely see that. Um, and, Joe, I also want you to talk... Um, it, about a replay scenario from a foul during an inbounds play in the Oklahoma City game against Utah. Can you break down the process of reviewing this play back in Secaucus, New Jersey? Sure, Rick. This is one of our triggers where the officials on the court, if they have doubt, they can come to the replay center. So on this play, we, we have a foul during a throw-in, so it's off-ball timing. And there was doubt whether Carmelo Anthony had released the throw-in yet. So when the officials came over, we showed him the, the, the far angle. And what you're going to see is he is held prior to the ball being released. So David Guthrie was the calling official on the court. He is on the headset. 
and he tells us in the replay center, who Derek Collins was here tonight, I have the foul here. We freeze the video, and then we looked over, and Carmelo was still holding the ball. That makes this an away-from-the-play foul, which is one shot, anybody in the game can shoot it, and they re retain possession at the same spot. So the penalty is much stiffer on that, and that's why they're allowed to come to replay. Tough play when you have action over here, you're watching it, and then expect it to see whether the ball was released or not. And, and it was less than half of a second. So very, very close play. Good thing they came to replay. We got it right. Joe, we all appreciate how hard you and your staff and your referees uh, work to get it right. And so we really appreciate the transparency here in these conversations as well. We will talk to you down the line. Continue to enjoy these playoffs. Thanks for having me, Rick. All right, Joe Borgia does a fantastic job, and so does this guy, James Harden. 44 big ones in the game one. When you're going to hear from Harden in